Okay, good morning everyone. On behalf of Servium, welcome to the next in the series of I Need webinars. Uh, I need one of those. Uh, so thanks for taking the time to, uh, to join us today. So the, the purpose of our webinars are really to uh, inform you about some of the latest vendors, latest technologies, trends that uh, are happening in the marketplace and things that we can uh, we think that uh, are innovative disruptive technology some really groundbreaking vendors and technologies that things that we believe will deliver uh, sort of competitive ad advantage to our customers so hopefully everyone's got the kit kats got your feet up relax for the next uh, sort of 30 minutes and uh, as usual we're using zoom as our platform to uh, to deliver our webinar and today's theme is all around uh, intelligent automation, redefining penetration testing. And uh, the partner we've got with us today uh, is Sysis. I'm currently joined by Noam Sejev. Uh, morning, Noam. Welcome uh, to our session this morning. Good morning, Steve, and thank you for hosting me. You're welcome. And good morning, everyone. So, without further ado, we'll, we'll get started. We'll take questions and answers at the end. Um, so we'll we'll be able to uh, build ask those anonymously, and also at the end we'll take a take a poll on the uh, on the events uh, as well. So a little bit of background on on Servium for those of you who who don't really know us, who've not really maybe dealt with us. But we are a IT provider where we put the customer you at the uh, your challenges at the centre of everything we do. So in essence, we're we're a troubleshooter. We deliver that through a great account management team where we walk in your shoes. We're very nimble, very agile as a business. Uh, we're sort of straight talking, practical, and our, our role really is to, to cut through all the marketing, all the hype that's in the, in the marketplace to help you make educated choices, educated decisions. Our approach is very much around a complete life cycle of services helping you from the point of view strategy, design, implement, and support a project no matter how large, no matter how small, but the key thing for us really is reviewing that project and making sure it's delivered to expectations on time, within budget, uh, et cetera. So we believe we go the extra mile to do that. And to help us achieve that, we have our services ecosystem of partners, subject matter expertise, as we have uh, today, to help us deliver that. So there's a lot of uh, resource, great breadth and depth uh, a resource that you can tap into as our customers. Today, and our sort of technology areas that we focus on, it's very much around security. Uh, it's a big topic uh, in the marketplace, certainly post GDPR. It's something that's becoming more and more on, on the radar of customers and something that we're getting involved with. So today really is about some new technology that we think is going to really deliver a different way of uh, penetration penetration testing. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Noam, and the, the floor is yours. Uh, and we are sort of doing a, a semi-live demonstration today, aren't we? So uh, we have rehearsed this, so fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. So uh, hello, everyone, again. Uh, my name is Noam Segev. I'm uh, the director of Europe, Middle East, and Africa for CISIS. Um, in my background, I'm coming from the cybersecurity consulting uh, industry. I used to manage uh, the international activity of uh, one of the most known cybersecurity consulting firms, and I was active in 40 countries. And uh, I was very happy with what I was doing until I got the chance to see this system working. And I had to leave my comfortable uh, job and, and just join this because as someone who comes from this industry, I rarely see technologies that are real game changers. And here I think that there is a real game changer that, um, and I, I will try to, to bring you my personal aspect as a cybersecurity consultant. So um, first of all, I will divide my presentation into three parts. First, when you, you try to show a new technology, a new technology is supposed to, to solve a real world problem. So the first part of my presentation will be to, uh, speak about the, the real world problem. And I claim that until today, we didn't have a real security validation that supports a cost-effective remediation. 
After explaining the real-world problem with a short review of uh, today's capabilities of doing security validation, I will jump into Sysys solution, explain about it a little bit. I will, met, I will make a lot of, um, um, let's say, statements. Some of them will maybe sound outrageous to you, but my third part of the presentation, I'm going to show you a demo from a real POC conducted on a real customer to show you how everything works. And I think that it will actually answer most of your questions. So uh, after this uh, short uh, uh, explanation, let's begin. So first of all, let's see, I think there's a delay with the presentation. Okay, first of all, let's understand a little bit what is an effective IT security implementation cycle. An effective IT security, uh, security implementation cycle is built from two pillars. The first pillar is uh, the security validation, which is currently done by penetration testing or by vulnerability scan. And uh, the second part is remediation. Now, an effective remediation cannot take place without proper validation of security controls, right? And of course, there is no point of spending resources on security validation if you don't have the intention and the resources to remediate afterwards. So this is one cycle, okay, built from two pillars. Now, theoretically, a good validation should indicate the most urgent technologies to be implemented, as well as the top network vulnerabilities to address. It should continuously, continuously stress test the existing cybersecurity technologies that are implemented within the organization. And we all know that today we're spending a lot of money on expensive tools, but in many, many cases, we are not operating them correctly. We are not using the right policies to operate them correctly. Um, so if we're talking about validation, validation, the good security validation should indicate on the technological aspect, for example, if you are having problems with your network configuration, if you have the right policies for your firewalls, for your antivirus, for endpoint detection and response tools, and all the other tools, if they are doing what they are supposed to do. And of course, if you are doing the patching correctly, but also there is the human factor, okay? And in the human factor, you want to know if your employees are aware enough and educated enough that in their normal operation, they are not uh, creating your network vulnerable to malicious hackers. Also, you would like to know if you're enforcing your credentials policy correctly. One of the other things that we have noticed is that many organizations think, especially big ones, by the way, they think that they know how many users they have and how many domain admins they have. So one of the things that a good security validation, it should validate that they know, what they know is the, the right thing. How many domain admins you have in your network? 50, 30? Do you really need this big amount of, of domain admins? Because, because each and every one of them, their credentials can be, can be theft. And then, you know, a malicious hacker can theoretically take control over your entire network. Okay, so as I said, <clears throat> Uh, today, the way to do uh, security validation until today was penetration testing, which is done usually manually by third-party consulting firms, like the one I used to work for. And the second one is a vulnerability scan, which is a software, which is good because it can be done continuously, but each one of them has its own limitation. And I would like to deep dive into the security validation disciplines and explain the difference between vulnerability scan and pen testing. And I'm sure that some of the things are known to you, but maybe there are some things that I need to, um, to bring you, to bring to your awareness, okay? So what is a vulnerability scan? A vulnerability scan is a static inspection of the potential points of exploit on a network to identify security holes, okay? It is conducted with automated software. Okay, it's good. As I said, it's good because you can do it continuously and uh, it's being operated by your own internal team. So it builds up their knowledge about your security profile. There are advantages here. What it does, it lists out potential security issues and grades them according to best practices. Now, what does it mean best practices? Best practices means industry standards, which means if I find this vulnerability in 1000 organizations, in average, it will be a low risk, a medium risk, a high risk, a critical risk. It doesn't take into account the actual business impact of the vulnerability uh, on your specific network, okay? And therefore, 
when you run a vulnerability scan, there are a lot of false positives. Also, another point is that vulnerability scan doesn't see the network as a whole. It, um, it's enumerating with each component separately, and therefore it cannot detect dynamic vulnerabilities. For example, network mis misconfiguration is something that will never be detected by a vulnerability scanning tool, okay? This is, this is just for, for just to explain what I was talking about. This is Gartner report from last year, and it shows the gap between known vulnerabilities as indicated on the green line that you see here against the actual exploitable vulnerabilities. And what you can see here is that in 2017, only 5% of the known vulnerabilities have been actually exploited. And it makes sense. It makes sense because how, you know, these are the vulnerability scanning tools are 15 year old technologies. They are doing the same thing. If you're talking about Nessus, Qualys, Rapid7, any vulnerability scan, the R&D is doing one thing, is searching components for vulnerabilities, okay? And this is the way they compete with themselves. Therefore, this number of the known vulnerabilities is, keeps on growing, but it has nothing to do with your, uh, with, with the capability of a malicious hacker to actually exploit these vulnerabilities. And many times, even if you have an exploitable vulnerability, it's not relevant to your specific network. So after explaining what is a vulnerability scan, let's talk a little bit about what is a penetration testing. So unlike a vulnerability scan, penetration testing is a dynamic evaluation of the security controls, as well as the business impact of the vulnerabilities across the network. What does it mean? A, a manual penetration tester will usually come, he will run the vulnerability scan on your network, and then he will take vulnerabilities, and according to his knowledge and experience, he will try to exploit them in order to prove the actual business impact of the vulnerability, what he was able to achieve because of this vulnerability, okay? So a penetration testing identifies both static and dynamic vulnerabilities, and it provides business impact analysis of the vulnerabilities on the actual network. Therefore, it elim eliminates false positives. If an ethical hacker showed you that he was able to get into your billing system or into your customer base, it's a fact. So now it links the multiple vulnerabilities to explore the actual risk. So we, we all understand that penetration testing, in terms of giving you a more focused information, is better. Okay, but human penetration testing, until today, you know, it's done by, by humans. So it has also its own limitations. And I would like to talk a little bit about the limitations of human penetration testing. First of all, you know, we don't have enough cybersecurity professionals in the world. In Europe only, we have a shortage of 300,000 penetration testers, according to Izaka report, okay? And when you don't have enough penetrations in the uh, pen testers in the world, uh, the price of the service goes up, okay? And you have limited budget. And the limited budget is being tra translated into a scope limitation. And therefore, when you run a penetration testing, a manual penetration testing, it will usually be scoped according to the time frame that you have. And therefore, it will not cover the entire network. It will not map the entire network from an attacker perspective because of time limitations. So it will be only a sample and it will be always opportunistic and achievement oriented because there is time pressure on the penetration tester to get as many top achievements that he can within this short time frame, which will be in average, it will be 10 working days. Also, a big problem is that the penetration testing is conducted periodically. In most organizations, it's being conducted only once a year, okay? Now, when you're talking about the infrastructure network, this is something which is very dynamic. It is the most dynamic layer in your organization. Applications are not changing from one version to the other. The infrastructure network is changing because people are working on it, because you're adding more components to it. Because this is, this is by the way, this is where you, you, all, of your, all of your key assets are located, okay? And also there is a problem with human penetration testing that it is very dependent on the talent of the pen tester. And in most cases, you will see differences between one report to the other. Also another point is that operating a third party penetration testing 
company is a is is a project okay and it consumes a lot of valuable resources commercial logistic and technical okay I will not go through the process of how you do penetration testing, but those of you who operated third parties know that you need to uh, issue a, a request for quotation and you need to decide first what will be the scope of work and then you need to get uh, different proposals and you need to evaluate them and then you need to choose with the right vendor and issue a, a, a purchase order and arrange for them a room to sit in and more and more and more. So this is, it consumes a lot of valuable resources and Probably if your budget is 10,000 quid for a penetration testing, you will find yourself spending additional 15,000 quid internally only on the process of getting this done. And eventually, and the most important thing is that a human penetration testing, because it's limited in scope, because it's done periodically, uh, and because it doesn't cover the entire network and maps it from an, entire, uh, in, from an attacker perspective, it, it, does not, it does not provide a real security validation that will support a cost-effective remediation. And this is what we want to achieve. So what is a real security validation? So a little bit about what, what, what we are doing, Pentera. So first of all, we were able to... Um, mimic the hacker's mindset and insert it into a machine language. By doing this, we, were, we are able to actually operate a nation-grade attack on the organization because we have the power of a thousand hackers, okay? And we operate penetration testers, but our penetration testers, what they are doing instead, we don't have enough to send them to each one of our customers on a bi-weekly basis. Our penetration testers, who are, by the way, officers from the Israeli army with 10 to 13 years of experience in average, um, what they are doing, they are dealing with research and development. They are studying all the new attack scenarios that are happening right now in the market. They are building tools that will mimic them. Okay, and they were sending updated attack scenarios to all of our customers every month. So we keep them updated all the time against all the new attack scenarios. And this is, you know, just, uh, just uh, you know, let's assume that you do penetration testing once a year and let's assume that your manual pen tester knows all the newest attack scenarios and let's assume that he's testing all of them still for a full year uh, you will not be protected. You will not be updated against all the new attack scenarios. So this is in general the concept. Oops, sorry. All right, let's talk a little bit about the key solution concept. So first of all, we are agentless, okay? We, just to explain, our software is installed on a Linux machine that has a GPU. The GPU is enabling us also to crack passwords, okay? And when you connect our software with the hardware that, ins uh, that it is installed on, all we need is a network connection. We are agentless, agentless, we don't deploy any agents in your network, and all we need is an access as if we were an ethical hacker that comes with this uh, laptop and connects to your network. Exactly the same, okay? We're totally, totally automated. So once you configure the attack, you press play and the machine will do its work from A to Z, doing all the possible ethical exploitations on all the potential victims and cover and map the entire network very, very fast. We will be able to do what it would take to, to a team of pentacles weeks to do, we can do in minutes. What it would take the months to do, we can do in hours. And we can cover big segments and map them entirely from all possibilities, let's say 500 IP segment we can cover entirely in two days, right? Two days of work. Uh, we are operating har harmless exploits. All the ethical exploits that we are doing are our own intellectual property. And all of them have security controls to make sure that the, the, the process will be safe and, safe, safe and managed by you, 
For the more aggressive attacks, for example, if you want to upload the malware on your network, or if you want to run a brute force, okay, you control the process. You can request the system not to do anything without your approval, not to run any ethical exploitation or specific ethical exploitations not to do without requesting for your confirmation on each one of the IPs that we are attacking. Uh, we are showing you the entire attack vector. We can show you exactly what is the root cause that connects vulnerability to several top achievements. And by that, we can show you what is a cost-effective remediation. Um, and last thing that I would like to talk about is that our normal operation is a black box operation. As I said, all we want is connection to your network and we will operate from there. But we give you the possibility to also conduct between the normal runs that we offer to do every two weeks. We offer you to do what if scenarios. So what if I have a secretary credentials? Can I go to the billing system? Can I go to the CEO's computer? And that and the other option that we can do is a goal targeted penetration testing, which means that if there are top assets that you want to make sure that they are 100% protected, you can ask our system to search for them. And it can be a file. Let's say that you just had now a board meeting, which is with sens very sensitive information. Our system can search according to the keywords or according to the IP address. And now you have a thousand hackers that are searching your entire network for all the possible attack vectors that will enable a malicious hacker to get into this sensitive uh, asset. Okay. Um, before I go to the demo, I want to explain exactly how the system is working. So as I said, all, I need, all we need is a, a, a network connection. And we, when we configure the attack, we will define what would be the IP range or the different IP ranges that we want to work on. Okay, and also other risk management parameters that I'm going to show you. And now we start play. The first thing that the machine will do will be a discovery it will discover all the existing IP numbers within the IP range. Next step, it will enumerate each one of them. So it will communicate with each one and will ask, what are you? Are you a computer, a server, a database, a, a router, okay? And what, what are the main, main operations that are running on you? Who are the main users? What was the last version that was installed? And out of this, we will provide a vulnerability analysis. Up to here, what I'm talking about is exactly the same methodology of your existing vulnerability scanning tools, okay? Up to here, it's a static vulnerability scan. But from this point, we stop being static, okay? And we start to become fully dynamic in your network. So the first thing that we are doing, we are sniffing credentials within your network, okay? If we were able to sniff, we will also try to crack them. And then we are running ethical exploitations. Now, all the possible ethical exploitation on all the potential victims. Once we were able to, uh, we, were, we were able to get an achievement on a, a victim, we will provide, the system will provide back post-exploitation. Post-exploitation means what kind of valuable information that I was able to get on the victim or how I use this victim in order to move laterally into the next one. We will also stress test and challenge your entire security architecture. For example, we will try to bypass your firewalls. We will upload malwares on victims, okay? Now, if you have an antivirus, it should potentially block us. If you have an endpoint detection response tool, it should segregate the system from the network, right? This is exactly the information that we want to provide you. If you are doing if, if, if your security architecture is doing what it's supposed to do. Because you want to be the first one to know if you have problems with your antivirus configuration or with your firewall configuration or other security tools. And at last, when we finish the cycle of the penetration testing, the last thing that we will do, we will sanitize the network, okay? If I, we were able to create a domain admin user inside your network, we will delete it. If I uploaded the malware, as I said before, we will delete it. We will not leave any remains from our last penetration testing. We will also not remember anything when we come two weeks later to do a new security validation. And just a few words before I go to the demo, which is the next page, is the whole idea is today that you can continuously do 
a security validation, which means that you will be running our solution probably every couple of days on each one of the segments, okay? And then you will use the next seven or eight days to remediate those top those, those vulnerabilities that lead to the top three achievements. And you will see that we are mapping the entire network from an attacker, uh, from an attacker perspective. We are actually able to indicate to you what would be those two or three vulnerabilities that if you deal with them within the next few days, you will get 95% security because they will block most, they, they will be the root source of most of the top achievements. It's a big claim, I know, I'm going to show you. So the second part of our, uh, of our tool is a dynamic penetration testing. And what we were able actually to do, and we are the only company in the world that is doing it, is to combine the two known uh, of, uh, security validation techniques into one fully automated tool. And by the way, the hardest part was to do the dynamic penetration testing. All right, so uh, let's go to the most interesting part, the product demo. And I'm going, as I've said before, this demo is taken from a real POC done on a real customer. The timeline is true. I can tell you that in the UK only, I was personally in more than 20 POCs uh, in person, I visited them, and they all pretty much look the same. So uh, let's begin. The first thing that we come to conduct an attack, we give it a name, and then we go for uh, uh, we go for uh, the the settings. The settings we will define what would be the IP ranges that we want to work on, and what would be the duration of the attack. Second step, we will define what will be the level of stealthiness of the attack. If it's going to be noisy, which means uh, it's going to be a heavy enumeration with, uh, with noisy discovery, or if we are going to be stealthy, uh, the idea is that when you start implementing our product, you will probably want to start with the noisiest mode. And as your security posture is getting better and better, okay, you should test yourself on a stealthier mode in order to find the right balance between availability and security. And then you can define what would be the attack parameters. If you want to allow exploits, if you want to de-escalate, use special exploits or not, allow administrative user creation, require approval for all of these, if yes, uh, for special exploits only or for all exploits, if you want to allow service brute force, if yes, if you want to require approval, and now, let's assume that we define this, and there's no point, we want to do it every two weeks, so there is no point of uh, defining the task again. What we will do now, we will schedule the task. So we will decide that we want to run on a weekly basis, or bi-weekly basis, okay? We are a big organization, we are now implementing the tool on 10,000 IPs divided into 50 different segments. So we will define what will be the task and when we want it to be repeat. And all we need to do is show the is see the reports at the end. Once we submitted, the attack has started. So this is the, the real timeline that we have. And we start with a black box, okay? The first thing that we do is the discovery. Here we discovered all the IPs within the IP range. And we're already doing enumeration. And we, from the enumeration, we already find vulnerabilities. You see, we already have machines that are colored in red. They have a critical vulnerabilities, machines that are colored in blue. They have low vulnerabilities. And we will have also high and medium when we continue. And once we have vulnerabilities, we start to actually run ethical exploitations. And already the ethical exploitations are being built, you see? All right, so you see that we already achieved validated domain credentials, domain hashes recorrect using various techniques. We sniff credentials over SMB, sniff credentials over HTTP. Guys, this is the timeline, see how it works. It just runs that fast. Up, oh, and we have a 10. Look. It's two minutes and 30 seconds. We got domain admin, user, and clear text password. It means that we basically own your network. All right. Now, as you can see here, we have a request for approval. Remember, when we define the parameters of the attack, we ask the system 
for an approval before running different ethical exploitations. It was the special exploits. And here you have a request for approval where, we are, where the system is asking you for those targets to run those different attacks. And you can define which one are sensitive and you don't want to run them, and which one you do want to run them. Maybe some of them you want to run later in the night. I don't know. Once you approved, boom. Now, another option that you have is the user input. I already was able to get credentials, all right? So now I can use those credentials. I can enter them in order to determine if this is a DC or if, it's a, or if I want to use existing credentials in order to advance the attack. I can use it. By the way, this is tool that I do when I'm more hands-on on the attack. But if you will not do it, probably the machine will do it later on by itself. If I do a POC and I want to run it and finish and show results within a few hours, usually it's less than an hour, but if I want to advance it, this is a good tool to do that. All right, let's continue to see what's going on. So, just a moment, please. I want to go to the first achievement where we got a domain admin user and clear text password. And here you see the number one. Number one means that we have one achievement. Let's open it. And what you see here is the entire attack vector, okay? Those boxes which are colored in, in, from the inside are vulnerabilities. And those that are not colored from the inside are the attacker achievement. Let's see what we have here. So first of all, at the bottom, you will have the achievement itself. We got the domain admin in user, clear text and password, okay? And you see, excuse me, and what you can see here, just a moment. And what you see here, you see the user, you see the password. Here I'm hiding the password. You can always go to settings and decide if you want to show it or not. Some companies are sensitive to, you know, to employees' privacy and the insight. Why did, it Why did it happen? So the first achievement was that we were able to sniff credentials, okay? And what we show you here is, we'll go back again. What we showed you here, that we sniffed credentials, the host, we showed you the host, who is the user, the type of the credentials, and here are the hash credentials. Later on, we were able to crack them. <coughs> Excuse me. We were able to crack them, and we were able to crack them because of also another vulnerability. But let's see what was the root cause to the problem that we were able to sniff credentials. So the top vulnerability that we have here is that sensitive information can be sniffed due to a network misconfiguration, okay? And uh, we tell you exactly what is the insight and also what is the immunity. In this case, it is recommended to disable the LLMNR protocol, okay? This is a, a Windows protocol that actually allows uh, your uh, computer, if you, if you are making a mistake as a user, you write google.con, C-O-N, Okay, you don't get a reply, so your computer will communicate with other computers in the network and ask them, hey, everyone, anyone knows Google.com? And then the attacker is sitting there and says, yes, I know Google.com, let's communicate. And this is how he sniffs credential. Okay, so here we tell you what to do. Okay, so you need to fix it. And you have the option to simulate the fix. Now see what happens when you simulate the fix. When you simulate a fix, you see that the entire attack vector has been utilized. Why do I show it to you? Let's go to another top achievement. 9.1, we're able to open a remote access session on the host. And you see that because we have fixed the network misconfiguration, these, though, all those attack vectors have also been neutralized. Don't believe me? Let's see what is the root cause. You see, same root cause. LLMNR protocol. Now, just a little bit, let's unsimulate it. And I want to explain to you what you see here. So we are now, we have jumped into 14 minutes of attack. And as you can see, those are the number of achievements from each type, okay? You already see that in 14 minutes, we have hundreds of achievements. Here we have 183 successful relays. And we were able to see 40 credentials. And seven, we were able to find a host um, that a local user has high privileges on. So we have seven of these. And we have uh, 18 validated domain credentials, okay? In this case, 9.1, we were able to open a remote access session on the host. And the number here is seven. So we have seven different achievements. Here is the first attack vector and the achievement. Here are the two attack vectors that led to this achievement. And here, 
we got into the third achievement. From the third achievement, we were able to hop into the second layer and get the fourth achievement. And from the second layer, we were able to hop to the third layer and get three more achievements. So this exactly shows you how the system finds all possibilities. A manual ethical hacker will usually find one attack vector, okay, show you the achievement, he will report you about this and run to, to get another achievement. He will not map the entire network and therefore he will not be able to provide to you a consolidated mechanism that shows you what are those one or two or three vulnerabilities that if you will deal with them with a minimum effort, you will get the maximum effect. Okay, last example that I want to show you, I want to go to the second, ah, by the way, <laughs> just think about it. The, the root cause of those two uh, top achievements, 9.1 and 10, are network misconfiguration. These are top achievements that are caused by a, by, by, by a vulnerability that a vulnerability scanner is not even capable of identifying. Think about it. Cool. Let's move to 9.4, where we gathered valuable information from the host. And we see the number four here. So we have four different achievements. We'll move to it soon. And what I want to show you when I go to this is I want to show you an example for how we do ethical exploitation. So as you can see, we have four achievements. We will open one of them. And let's see what is the valuable information. So what I show you here that I didn't steal your source code. I didn't tamper with your source code. But if I was a malicious hacker running the same attack vector, I already own your, not, your source code because I have your GitHub access. And now I can do whatever I want if I was a malicious hacker to do to steal your, your source code, right? But I'm doing it in an ethical way. I just indicate to you what is the valuable information that I found without touching it. So it's totally harmless. All right, so you guys as you know, technical professionals, you understand that those graphs are the most important tool for you to prioritize your remediation correctly. But still you need to work with other arms inside and outside your organization. For example, you need to work with a regulator and you need to work with your boss, with the CEO, okay, and you need to prove to him what would be the actual business impact if you will not get the budget that you need in order to remediate, right? So we generate for you, and also you need to work with other arms in the organization. So we have different reports that are covering all of your requirements. First of all, this is the summary report. A summary report is allowing you to generate a report that goes to the regulator or to the management. Okay, and the first step, it provides you the name that you have given to the attack, the description, the run type, the time, the date, and the duration of the attack, how many devices were discovered, and what from each type, and what were the total actions that the machine has done. Okay, what were the total actions, how many were successful, and how many you have blocked us. Now, this is a very good way to communicate how you're getting better and better from one step to the other. By the way, on our next version, which is coming in two weeks, we will also have a risk score report, which will take into consideration the top achievements, okay, and the, and the business impact of those top achievements, and, and will give you a score, and you will see, you will be able to communicate that from one run to the other, your, your, your uh, score is getting better and better. Okay, now what we show you here, you can show the top three achievements, or view more, and the action items, which means the remediations you need to do, or view more, and you see everything very, very detailed, but you can also hide the relevancy if you want. And you can show, you can show first of all the graphs of vulnerabilities found and attacker achievements found, and we give you information about the password strength. So we were able to crack 200 and 21 passwords, out of 261 passwords that we were able to sniff, we cracked three, it was trivial, commonly used passwords. It was 103 of them were easy for us to crack, seven were medium, 78 were strong, and 40 we were not able to, to crack. And here we give you more focused information about things that you need to look at. First of all, we show you how many hosts are vulnerable to MS-17. In this case, there were hosts that were 10 hosts that were vulnerable to MS-17. I hope that any, everyone knows what I'm talking about. And uh, how many, let's say, antivirus bypasses we were able to make. 
So we give you more focused information about things that you need to put an eye on, all right? Now, let's assume that I now want to get a budget. And you saw in this case that I had a problem uh, with my misconfiguration and I need to go, I'm a CISO and I need to go to the, to the IT director above me and get a budget immediately, or I, I want to get 10 uh, IT guys from the IT operations to go and fix all the LMNR protocols on all the, the, the Microsoft computers in the network immediately. And I want to prove it to him. I want to show him what will be the business impact. I will go to the attack map. I will push on this. I will decide what I want to show him. And here I can show you, show him the proof of what is the problem and what is the business impact. Okay, I can open also the other one and show him that the two top achievements were done. This is a very good way to get the budget and show the proof of what is the actual business impact and what is the risk if I will not get the budget to do what I'm doing. And now we can show you all the credentials list and we can show you all the hosts. So you can use whatever information you want from this report and you can go and export it to PDF. And now we can use it for the regulator. Here I built something that goes to the management, not to the regulator, but very, very easy. You have a very a full report that provides very good understanding about your security posture. Now, this is one report, but we also have other departments in the organization. We have departments like the IT operations. The IT operations are a, is a department that uh, needs to work on all the uh, remediations. And they like to get this information on an Excel file. So you can export into a CSV. And guys, here's the list of what you need to do. And now they can follow up. I fixed those IPs on those dates, et cetera, et cetera. The last report that I want to show you is the summary, is the full action report. The full action report shows everything that the machine has done step by step according to timeline. And you see all the blue ones are the things that the machine was able to do. And all the red ones are the ones that we are not capable of doing because you blocked us. When you, do, when you run a manual penetration testing, all the information that you're getting is about what the attacker was successful to do. We are giving you a full transparency, which allows you also to understand where you're good at and where you need to focus more and improve. And I can tell you that most of our customers running our tool with short remediation cycles of two weeks, okay, we saw them growing their level or security posture so high that at a certain point, there was nothing to remediate. But then they continued doing two or three cycles and new vulnerabilities came up because the network is so dynamic. And you know what? This is exactly what they needed to do because if a new vulnerability comes, we want to be the first one who knows about it before a malicious hacker will find out about it. And for summary, what I want to say is that for the first time in the world, and this is what I think, we are one step ahead of the hacker because until today, we're always one step behind him. Okay. Great, okay, thanks. Thanks, that. No, that's a really insightful uh, demonstration there. Glad that uh, that worked. We've got some, uh, some questions that, uh, that have been asked. Um, uh, Mike saying, uh, when you say you need access to the network, is this access to the network from, uh, from where you are or, or is it within the network? Excellent question, excellent question, Mike. Uh, first of all, uh, this tool, as you can understand, when an organization is using it, it becomes a top asset for a malicious hacker. Therefore, this computer will be a dedicated computer which is inside your organization. It is not connected into the outside world. And even when you are updating this, your software, you will be getting an email from us, okay, with information where to download. You will download from your own personal computer into a USB disk, a USB drive, and then you will go to the physical system and update it there. Never ever connected to the outside world, so it is located inside your network. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Noam. Mike's also asked about how how the uh, size is uh, is licensed. Is it on a, a per user IP range duration? So just explain high level on on how it's licensed, uh, Noam. Hey. Uh, okay, the, the software is licensed as an annual subscription, which includes all the updates 
because there's no point of having this without, you know, keeping your uh, protected against all the new attack scenarios. So all the upgrades are included and the support, of course, a um, regular subscription model. Uh, we are providing, um, uh, this is according to its, its dedicated IPs. So once you have bought a bank of IPs, you can run on those, on, on those specific IPs during the entire year, uh, but on those dedicated IPs only. So it's not that you can, if you have 10,000 IPs in your organization, it's, it's not that you can buy a subscription for 200 IPs and then test each, one, each time another, another segment. You will need to buy something that covers your entire IP uh, segment. Another point is that we are, since this is, not all of our customers are capable of, you know, analyzing, not all of the organization have real cybersecurity professionals working for them. And they are not capable of analyzing or having the right insights from the tool. We are also offering uh, customer support services to help them implement the knowledge and the know-how. So we are teaching them how to use the technology. Although it looks very simple, I, I think. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Noam. Um, from uh, John, um, from a, a, a CISIS perspective, uh, does um, the hacking exploits interfere with any other security software that might, might be implemented? We are challenging all the security, the entire security architecture of the organization. This is our purpose. We want to check if this is working correctly. Uh, if you have, as I, as I said before, if we have an antivirus, if we have uh, endpoint detection and response, we want to check that they are doing what they are doing properly. By the way, I want to tell you, this is really funny, but we are, I, I never heard about another vendor who is actually being recommended by other cybersecurity vendors. For example, Vectra Networks, I don't know if all of you know them, but this is a very, very cool solution. Their POC is a POC that takes three weeks and they recommend to their customers also to look at our technology because when we are running our penetration testing they want to show them that they can they're able to see our activity within the network so a good penetration testing and a real security validation should interfere with everything that you have and challenge all the security products that you have in the organization okay thanks Noam. um one from uh, paul um is is the software um does it give sort of hackers access to the information that it um, that it manages to assemble? Uh, if I understood correctly, you are asking if we are capable of seeing what happened in the organization when you run it. No, if if someone if a hacker would be able to access the information uh, that uh, that you've gleaned from uh, from your assessments, you know, is it is it available? Can anyone access it? You know, how look, how secure look, is it? Look, our system is secured but also needs to be treated with care as if it was a critical asset in the organization. This is why I explained that we are not connected to the outside world. It's a dedicated machine. It's not connected uh, into uh, the network. It has its own protections, of course, but it's also, a, uh, there is a methodology of how to, how to use it and how to connect it. And uh, for example, if you are using a laptop, my laptop is an attack tool, okay? I will, um, if, if, I was, if I was using it as a CISO in the organization and just operating on different segments manually, I would, I would lock it in a safe and not keep it connected to the network when it's not operated. Okay. So it's a matter of handling it, but it is a secured system, of course. Yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, and, and just finally, one from, uh, one from Alan about um, implementing the CISIS tool, um, someone with maybe limited security knowledge uh, and so on if the organization doesn't have uh, maybe an internal CISO but some of the limited knowledge how easy would it be to for them to to implement and then then use the software well the idea is that you not need to have to be a penetration tester in order to operate the system it's enough that you have someone that understands IT Okay, and he knows how to configure the attack and he knows how to understand the vulnerabilities you don't need to be a hacker to do it. The hacker is already implemented inside. So if you don't have any dedicated IT security specialist in the organization, you're not a customer for us. Because, and, and you're in, between, between us, this organization will probably be hacked. But it's enough that you have good IT guy 
that understands a little bit security and it's enough for him to operate. Plus, we are teaching. We, we are providing services that will help them configure the first runs and also analyze the, the we, we do the knowledge transfer. Okay, okay, that's great. Well, that, that's all, all the questions. Um, so what I'll do now, that I'll just, I'll just launch the, uh, the, the poll, but and if people wouldn't mind completing that, I'll just sort of summarize. Um, so for anyone who's, who's interested in, uh, in CISIS, then uh, we are uh, providing um, uh, a proof of concept. Um, so you can, you can have a look at it, try it uh, uh, within your organization. So there is a proof of concept uh, available. Um, if you just get in touch with your serving account manager and with Noam and his colleagues at CISA, we can, uh, we can arrange that. Uh, so uh, uh, there is a POC that is available to, uh, to everyone. Um, so Noam, that, that was really, really useful. I, I must admit from our perspective, there's a lot of talk around intelligent automation, AI, machine learning, and so on. And this is a great way of sort of automating the, the sort of process that's historically been very manual. Um, and I know you've, you've sort of highlighted the, the weakness of a, a traditional approach. So, you know, certainly from, from our perspective, it's, um, you know, it, it's been very, very useful, got great insight. So hopefully everyone's enjoyed, enjoyed it as well. If you do have any further questions, then... By all means, get in touch with your account manager uh, or drop me an email. Uh, my details are there. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll get those, uh, an those questions answered uh, uh, relatively quickly. So I think th thanks, Noam. That, that was great. Thank you for taking the time to, uh, to do that. And it's good to see that the, the sort of live demo worked well. Um, there will be a recording of the, uh, of the webinar. So I'll be sending details around of that uh, later on today. So if you want to uh, watch the elements of it again or share it with your colleagues, there will be a recording available uh, to, uh, to view. Um, as I mentioned, this uh, was the next in our series of um, iNoot webinars. Uh, our next one is on the 15th of March, uh, which is all around, uh, again, something new and innovative around out-of-band management. So for any of you who've got uh, multiple offices, a, 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 a quite an innovative way of um, managing your, your networks remotely. So, no, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. That. And excuse uh, me for the accent. No, no it's okay. Well, it's what, what my Geordie accent and your, your accent, and I think uh, hopefully we, we didn't need any interpreters today. So thanks Great. for taking the time. Everyone, thank you for joining. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully you, you found that of uh, a benefit. And uh, that's it for today. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Thank you, everyone.